Welcome to ProLine TV. I'm host Greg De Palma. Joining me once again, talking NFL. And for this week, it's week 13, Mr. Jim Feist. Lucky week 13, right? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, unless you're a coach of the Chicago Bears. So. <laughs> Maybe the best thing for him. He didn't belong in that job. It's, it, it is really something else. So you tell me if, if it, this is different, because obviously um, you've seen a lot more football from, I mean, when you were growing up, what do you, what is your last memories? I mean, your first memories of football growing up, like that you can actually remember. Oh, wow. You're talking a long time. Because for me, it's the, uh, the late seventies, oh. early eighties. Well, I'm a little older than you, but. I, I can remember when the, you know, the, all the games were played on natural turf and the weather was always a condition. We didn't have the all I our, our, our that was fun. stuff. I, 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 you know, in many ways I prefer that, but then there's the argument that you're not really seeing great football because nah. the weather, but I, you know, watching these games on like Buffalo and the other day with Pittsburgh and Cleveland. Awesome. That, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Who wants to see the Minnesota Vikings in a dome? I mean, that's so, you know, they haven't been to a Super Bowl since they've been in that dome. It's a jinx. They got to go back. I know they're never going to go back to outdoors. But, I mean, look, I'm not a season ticket holder, so I understand they don't have – I'm not the one who has to worry about sitting out there in zero-degree temperatures up in Minnesota. But, come on, that's a real home field advantage. I was – I was. did you see the seats? I, mean, I don't know how people were in the stands last night. There was so much snow in that stadium. I don't know how they fit people in there. Yeah, it was crazy. It, it, it's pretty it's awesome. nuts. It's but nuts. What would you say? Because I, I, I look, I went to games at Chase Stadium uh, uh, when the Jets uh, uh, were playing there. So I remember those games were awesome. I remember growing up going there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, do you remember what would you say? Would you say 60s? Well, yeah. Easy. You know, when I was, when I was younger, am I. I played baseball and I, I, I loved base. Baseball was my favorite sport when I was very young. I didn't get into football that much until I into my teenage years, which was late fifties and sixties. Meaning you didn't um, even watch it. it. Well, not too much. And there wasn't okay. that much on TV. I mean, I know that's I, true. You yeah. know, I, I was six years old before they invented television. Yeah. <laughs> 1948, so. 49 was television was invented. That's pretty uh, <laughs> weird, uh, but yeah. So, so then, what would you say then? What would be? Would it be the seventies? It it was it was definitely in the sixties. I mean, I remember 60s. the Y Tittles and the you do you know all that and the Johnny and Idises and all those that that stuff. I mean, do you remember? Did you watch that game? That what was that called? That greatest game ever played kind of thing? The Colts and the Giants. I, I don't know that I watched it, but later on in life, I did watch tapes of it. Okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, I don't even know where I was going with this. I do, but I'll-, I'll, I'll <laughs> Oh, it's good, I'll, it's good stuff. It's yeah. good stuff. I, I mean, the, the fact is, is that this is what I was going to refer to, because we were talking about Eberflus. Do you recall back in those days, could even be the 70s when you were a little bit older, do you recall when um, a coach was hired- that he would be he would be fired so quickly like after just a year and a half uh and not just one guy but several guys I mean, did you did it, did it work that way the work the way it works today no because you had no social media and now everything is scrutinized within seconds of them making a mistake the entire world is on you know up your butt and I mean, it was it was so the, the mistake he made the other day was so blatant. It was sure. I mean, I, I'd have fired him before they got on the bus. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know. back in the day, you would not have seen that. And remember too that the only games we got to watch were our local games. We never got to see any games because there was only you know a local game that was what you'd see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yep. now I get to put the red zone on. I watch it and then I watch replays of it. And so I, I see all the games sometimes, not all of them, but I, just some of the teams that are out of it right now, I'm not, I don't pay that much attention to, but uh, you know, the contenders, 
separating the contenders from the pretenders. I watch those games quite often because I try to see a focus on some. I'll watch it and I'll focus on line play versus quarterback and running back stuff because everybody focuses on where the ball is, but the line play is so important. Like, for example, I did a video. I don't know if you got it, but it, it was on Kansas City and how, how poorly they look. I mean, here's a team that's lost once, and they they look like garbage. But if you look at – you dissect the games, they take big leagues, and then they, they back off and they get into these tussles. And right now, they need – they really need a left tackle. And they can't, no, they're not going to get one. But they're they're going to they're going to have to make one. I mean, maybe not have. possible. It's too late. <laughs> so they're going to have to live with it. And nobody feels sorry for the Chiefs. So no, that's, that's true. Uh, yeah, they definitely. It is incredible that they would allow the Las, the Las Vegas Raiders, who have been playing like crap, and they even went to the to Las Vegas a month ago and just beat them easy. And there's no running game. There's no running backs. And I know O'Connell's a young kid, but you know what? I know he was banged up, but just play this kid. I don't know what what, you, what are you doing? Just let the kid play. The, you know, the kid has four. I think he had four years of starting experience at Purdue. That is a that's these are the type of quarterbacks like Brock Purdy. These are the kids that can translate pretty quickly into the NFL. And I'm not saying he's their future starter, but just let him play the rest of the season, which I'm sure they will. Um, but as far as the game is concerned, overall, look, the end of the game, I, I, I was able to I, I was putting that game on just specifically to finish watching that end of the game. And the thing that I really think that was the biggest injustice was the officiating. Well, officiating. It was but so the officiating, obvious. The officiating is always bad. Or it's poor. so obvious that you see yeah. a flag is up in the air. While the play is going on, that that means that the flag's in the air. That means the whistle must have blown a half a second earlier. So the the ref blows the whistle while the play is going on, and they allowed it anyway. They didn't. The guy didn't. The one official to run over to the other official and say, "Hey, I, I I threw the flag. I blew the whistle. That the play shouldn't stand. No, no why wasn't that said? What? Why didn't anybody say this?" So that play should never have standed. Now you can you're gonna hear about conspiracies, it's the Chiefs, and they're gonna do this for the Chiefs and that for the Chiefs, but this is this is what you get. This is you deserve that kind of talk when you when you're so incompetent that you can't make the correct call. And then I heard afterwards that the center, even though he's a rookie, that it wasn't the center's fault. It was the guard's fault. Yeah, he he made a mistake. Yeah, yes. so I thought that was stand up of the guard just to say he made the mistake. Um, well, there was a, there was another mistake also. The, the 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 coach in that situation should have been kicking a field goal at, on that play. There should not have been. But they had a timeout. They 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 should have kicked the field goal right then and there. There was no reason not to. They were close enough. They have a great kicker, although he's missed some. They all missed some. I mean, look at the Justin Tucker problem they have in Baltimore right now. I mean, so, so they all miss. But I would have kicked the field goal right then, just in case there was some kind of penalty or something. You have that option. I would. Did you see right the end of the Tampa Bay game? Pardon? Did you see the end of the Tampa Bay game? Well, I heard about it. Didn't see it. Okay, so there's six seconds left. Six. Now the Raider Chief, Chief game. There was like 15 seconds where you're saying call timeout there was six seconds left. Okay. And I'm saying that's with six seconds. I'm going, what are they doing? Why are they running another play? But it is Baker. So he's a veteran quarterback, you know, so you, okay. So they got, now he throws this. It's like a, a quick, quick pass to the receiver. He must've went four yards, catches it low to the ground. And they call timeout two seconds left. They ran a play four seconds, gained about four yards which, all right, I, it worked, but that's dangerous. Six seconds sure to is. go, and you want to play just to gain four extra yards. Look at the garbage they did up in up in Chicago. The the, the Lion game. I mean that they they had a, plenty of time. That the mistakes was not only the coach. Although I didn't care for the coach, I didn't care for the hire of him in the beginning. I thought he should have been fired before this season started. 
the quarterback is, is an experienced quarterback. He should know you can't throw deep when there's no time on the clock. Who are you talking the about? Came, you're talking about Caleb Williams. Oh, he's not experienced. Well, he played in college. and my God, they play the same rules. Nah. They, do, they, still play, they still play against the clock. See, this is the problem with Caleb Williams. This is what everybody t thought about when we were analyzing Caleb Williams and Daniels. This is exactly what we talked about. You could tell yeah. Caleb Maturity. Williams up here is yeah. just, he's not right. He just, he doesn't get it. And, and yes, coach definitely fired bad play, but come on, kid. I mean, you're changing the play at the line of scrimmage when the clock is running down because you want the proper protection. I mean, at that point, you just, again, I know the coach should have done it, but the quarterback at that point also needs to just say, all right, time, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm in over my head, but I mean, that, that's, that was just awful. That was awful all, all around. So, the, you know, that's, I mean, the, the league is in a, in my opinion, the league is in a very bad shape this year. I mean, it's still entertaining football. We still love it, but half the league is, is really maybe not half, but there's at least eight teams that are really terrible. And, and, and teams it that goes from the too. goes from the coaching all with, you know down to the offensive line play and the yep. I mean it's just a mess, but yep. it's hard to find talent, and, and we're well, going to get into it when we talk about some of the stuff that's going on out there. I mean, there's some big injuries that happened this week too. Yeah, and and I think the thing is, you hit it on the head. It's really the coaching. I mean, I and we, we I mean the perfect example is, are the are the L.A. Chargers. Perfect example. Everybody knew that they were a talented team that should be a playoff team. No, no, no. And then finally they wisen up. Harbaugh comes in and now they're one of the better uh, up and coming teams in the NFL. They're, 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 uh, I don't think they're a Super Bowl team this year, but they're going to no. give whoever they play in the postseason, even if so, it's yeah. the top team in the AFC, they're going to give them a run for their money. They're and, very, very well coached. They don't, they're, they're lacking talent. They're banged up, but they're very well coached. And they have enough to give you a hard time. Yeah. And now the team th they beat the Falcons. They got a problem. They got the same problem the Jets have. You got an old quarterback that's coming off an injury. His arm is dead. Apparently so. I, it's amazing I how mean, quickly it happened. That was. I could throw the ball better than that. Yeah, something he happened has, to him. The, there's the, 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 this, I'm not talking about the fact that he can throw the ball down the field a little bit, but the, the speed on those those throws, Yeah, I mean, they're like a high school kid. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's not – I mean, these are older guys. I mean, the longevity of a quarterback in the NFL has always been that watch out when they get to 35, 36. You know, yeah, Brady was different. He was a different guy. He treated his body different for years and everything. It's kind of like LeBron, you know, basketball. They he, he can go forever because they they really took care of themselves. They ate right. They worked out right. They have million dollars equipment in their house. That well, LeBron's constantly. LeBron's uh, thankful that he's playing in this era. That's for sure. Because if LeBron was playing in the era where we grew up, he would have retired three four years ago, because he wouldn't have lasted. So, you know, you're in the year of the NBA of, uh, you know, you, you whisper and you get a And you get a foul. So and it's too tough. Uh, but in the NFL, you're right. I mean, it is. I think Tom Brady made everybody think hey, if he could do it, I could do it. I, I, I could play it on 40. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's I think Cousins, I, I honestly think Cousins is done. And, and it's strange, that, too, because I, he was look he looked pretty good early in the season. So. Well, but but the hits and you you know we're down down into a yeah. lot of games. They've already played twelve games. These guys take a lot of hits. There's a lot of practice. The body starts to wear out as you get older. I can attest to that. <laughs> but I'm not forty, but I do know I never took the hits that those guys take. And look, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is not capable of playing great football anymore. I'm sorry. No, he, no, just he can't. Isn't. He can't. He can't. He can't lead a team anymore. He needs to have, he's one of those guys now that needs to have all of the help in order for him to be successful. And that's never been his deal. He used to elevate teams. He can't well, do that he, anymore. He was, he was a tremendous talent. I mean, yeah. just a tr tremendous talent. 
I can't but take that away from him. But those days are over. So, um, and speaking of the Falcons, and I mentioned Baker before, and we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. Here come the Buccaneers. I love the guy. They're going to win. Here that. come the Buccaneers. They're going to win that division. He so is a warrior. Now. That kid's and, a warrior. And Atlanta's got the advantage because they swept him. But remember, That's we said that these two weeks would be the two weeks that Tampa would need to take advantage schedule wise because Atlanta will be at Minnesota this week. And Tampa Bay has got the Raiders this week. And uh, this this is the week that Tampa Bay must take advantage and take a one-game lead because uh, it's going to get a little easier uh, for Atlanta. And, and the schedule is also easy for Tampa, even though the following week Tampa's got to play the Chargers. Uh, but that's, again, a big reason why Tampa's got to take advantage this week and try to take the lead over Atlanta. But the way it's going, just, I mean, what, five games left? I, I, I can't imagine that Atlanta's going to hold on. I just can't. Well, they're going to they're gonna have to put Penix in there. And I know they drafted him for a reason. It's probably security because, you know, Cousins are coming off the Achilles, and they must, that might have been the reason they did what they did. And it kind of looked dumb when they did it because they paid Cousins so much money. But right now it looks like maybe they need him. That's uh, see, it's going to be interesting to find out if they even think of making that decision. I know the fans are going to call for it, not all of them, but there will be fans calling for it. Um, look, when you, uh, you just got to trust your coaching staff and whether or not you they watch, believe he's ready. When you watch the tape of Cousins throws, I mean, through four interceptions, and some of those look like softballs that a kid in high school would throw. I mean, these things were so slow that any defensive back could catch up to them. I mean, it was horrible. Horrible. Well, horrible maybe you got to change uh, your offensive philosophy and, and, and instead of relying on Cousins, and Atlanta has been in the past a running team. They've got a great running back. You know, maybe that's uh, what you got to start. Because even if you get the rookie in there, you're going to have to rely on your running game anyway. So maybe that's what they got to do. They got to take the ball out of his hands. I don't know. But – at least they did. At least, like you said, you could say what you want about the Penix move, but uh, it was uh, insurance, and now it looks like they're going to need that insurance a lot earlier. Then there was it, we talked we talked about this a, little, a couple of weeks ago, I think, or last week, about the Lions being the best team in the NFC and maybe the best team in football, but right now they're banged up a, really bad. They've got they're losing players, especially on defense, right and left. And Philadelphia is coming on, and they look. And I said it was the number one and two in the NFC, but they are playing out of sight, and they have recency of being in the Super Bowl and almost winning it. So I mean, can't take that away from them. And what the hell does Baltimore do about Justin Tucker? He misses everything. And this is a Hall of Fame quarterback, the, maybe the best kicker that ever lived, and now he can't hit anything. I, I you know, it's a tough one. Uh, Harbaugh is a special teams guy, so if anybody is going to know what to do, it's him. Uh, I, I still have a hard time believing that they would cut the cord this season. Well, and, I, you know, I would, I wouldn't cut him. But no, I'm just saying, cut the cord I, and let I would, him I would, I, I would bench him and, and do give. Maybe he needs a break. It's not a bad maybe, idea. You know, it, it seemed to work for um, what the kids think. The the quarterback um, quarterback for Carolina. They benched oh. him for a couple of weeks. Yeah. What's I can't remember his name right off the bat, but he came. He's playing good now. He gave him a couple of weeks to look back, settle in. Uh, get his catch his breath. Maybe that's what he needs. I mean, this is this, what, what Justin Tucker is automatic. This guy he never, he never missed. Now he can't hit anything. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, and, and look, he is getting older, but kickers, they last. I mean, they're in really good condition. If they keep themselves in premium condition, they could, they could kick till they're 40. I remember uh, Adam Vinatieri. He was great too. Yep. And then all of a sudden, he he cooked it. He kicked the team right out of the league, or right out of the, the, the you know the playoffs. I mean, he he couldn't hit anything. 
He it's was. Like, uh, it's like a golfer with the golf stroke. I mean, all of a sudden you're shanking the ball into the woods, and you know, instead of hitting the pin high. Yeah, if there's a, if there's a kicker that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, a place kicker is definitely Adam Vinatieri. So, um, but yeah, uh, we'll find out what Baltimore does because who knows what happens if he makes kicks that he's used to making. But look, that's also a part of uh, winning when you're uh, when you're having a good season and, and those things that we talk about every year when we're making predictions in the beginning of the season. Always preface certain divisions or certain teams and say. Hey, a lot of it's going to depend on injury luck, schedule oh, yeah. luck, uh, officiating luck. Uh, this this league is so close that because how many times too you talk about and what I mean by schedule luck is, well, what if the Eagles had played the Ravens in Week Three when the Eagles weren't playing great and Justin Tucker was still making kicks, but they get him at the right time. So that's why there's a little thing that schedule luck helps you. You're a very good team, but you also need a little bit of luck. And the Eagles and the Lions and those teams, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're just really in a great place right now. But like you said, I guess we'll find out whether or not any of those injured Lions will be able to come back because that's the key. You know, I don't, I don't think it really matters if Detroit plays Philly. I know they're a dome team, but I'll be honest with you. I don't think it matters. I, I think Detroit's capable well, of going well, this, to Philly this- and beating them. This week, the line they're they're hosting Packers, and the line went from six to three and a half. I mean, off of base these these injuries. They have a lot of injuries, all in the same area in the defense. And, yeah, uh, that's, I don't know. That's a. I mean, that when the odds makers and the betters, the big money people making bets that big, and moving a number that big, it means something. Oh, isn't that though? If it starts at six and a half and goes down to three, isn't that because money's coming in? Yes, and those okay. people are those people are winners. Those yeah. people that are taking that well, six, the five, the fours, they're yeah. They're but I mean, it's not a secret. They're basically saying that no, I think those guys that are out will cost Man. Detroit, and and I get the six. I completely understand it. It's a big he number. He six it, and one, he can't. The six was too high anyway. Yeah, it's a big number, uh, but. I, I I think three and a half. I, I, I got to see exactly who's playing or not. But look, you still have Goff out there. You still got the offensive line. You still got the offense. And that is a loaded offense. And we still don't. Look, Green Bay had a nice win versus Miami. And we've been waiting for them to have one of those wins. But was that more of Miami came to town at the right time in the schedule when it was freezing and et cetera, et cetera. So we'll find out this week. Or was this the week that we talked about the last week or two that Green Bay needed to kind of get Jordan Love going the way he did last year when he had a great second half? Was that the week? Did that and maybe it is? Maybe they go play Detroit, beat Detroit, Jordan Love throws three or four touchdown passes, and they go the Packers. So that's the great thing about the NFL nowadays. And even we've seen this for years, ever since we've had that wild card deal, is that if you get hot. At the, at the right time, you can be a wild card team. You don't have to be the first or second seed. We saw it last year. Packers came this close to beating the Niners, just as close as the Lions came to beating them. So Packers still have enough talent. We'll find out this week. It'll be a really awesome game. It should be. It, it's going to be a great game to watch, definitely. Yeah. We've got the, the, um, we, we have some really good games in the schedule now. We've got a lot of this division stuff going on. You have the revenge game of Pittsburgh just lost at Cleveland. Now they're hosting Cleveland. And what about the and what about the Pittsburgh Steelers? Another winning season. Jim disappeared. Hello, Jim. Where'd you go, Jim? So Jim's Cleveland Browns came back to haunt him again. Uh, let's take a look at the – here's the – as you can see uh, while we're talking, I'm, I'm scrolling through the playoff picture, and there's the two teams that have already clinched playoff berth in the AFC. I can't believe the Chiefs are still number one, but I guess nobody can. Uh, and there you see the rest. And another big rematch – I thought this was the one Jim was going to reference – is the rematch between Seattle and Arizona. That's going to be a big uh, uh, rematch – I haven't seen any of the lines yet again this week. 
So I'll, uh, as soon as I get Jim back, I'll see if I can uh, make some predictions on some of these lines. I got to believe Arizona is just going to be just a, a very small favorite. Let me pop Jim back here. I couldn't even, he I couldn't hear you. I lost you somehow. Yeah. You, you, you blanked out. Um, I did. You were talking about the rematches, and one of the rematches that uh, I think, well, you got two that are the big rematches. You Actually, three. We, that's one of them. The second one is Seattle and Arizona. And yeah. uh, Seattle, of course, uh, it was funny. I was looking at the um, – in the Wise Guy contest. So I did the – I did I used my three-pointer my my three pointer with Seattle this week because I saw that the line was uh, like two and a half against the Jets or whatever it was to start the week. And I just – again, I'm, immediately I'm like, are you kidding me? Come on. See, the Jets? So as we get later in the week – the line now starts to move, and, and it started to move because of the injury uh, potential injuries on uh, on the on the Seattle Metcalf and uh, I think Lockett. So the line all of a sudden went to Jets. Now had actually yeah. moved up not only to a favorite, but I'm looking on Sunday and I'm seeing on my sports book, I'm seeing the line actually got to two. Yes, Jets, but then it went back down again, and I think it went back down to one Jets on my sports book. Um, and if you watch the game, okay, you realized that even though the Jets made it a lot closer than I thought it was going to be, the fact is it was just handed to them because of special teams and blunders. You had Leonard Williams sacking Aaron Rodgers on a third down at the Jet 45, taking him out of field goal range. But wait a second, when he sacked him, he hit his helmet. And it was a 15-yard penalty. That kept the drive alive. Now, what did that do? Instead of the Jets punting about, I don't know, five minutes later in game time, the Jets would go on to take a 14-0 lead because of that one play. Because they scored a touchdown on the drive. The Jet and Seattle gets the ball stripped on the kickoff return. And then the Jets scored again and got the two-point conversion. So isn't that crazy how one play – a 15-yard face mask penalty can change from zero to 14 points. So even though the Jets got that, and then they got a kick return touchdown later in the game, even with all that, they were not able to hold off the Seattle Seahawks, and the Seahawks won the game late. Uh, the pen it was penalties all over the place. It was just a typical thing that we talked about, Jim. We we've been talking about it for weeks. The Jets are one of those teams that just have no confidence whatsoever. And even when they got the biggest leads in these situations against good, fairly good, even football teams, they just can't win. They just don't know how to win. It's not in their DNA right now. It's, it's nope. the, the ownership, the, the coaching, the quarterbacking. I mean, they went all in on Rodgers, and that was a huge mistake. Um, the, the owner. Those guys are gone. Uh, it, it, this is a friend. This is a franchise that has been in the doldrums for a long, long time. Uh, I mean, some teams like Dallas will have winning regular seasons and then collapse in the playoffs. But the Jets just, they collapse all the time. They, they're just not a winning franchise. They just don't have the DNA. Did you hear about uh, the the fact that the NFL could have this season, this off season, they could hire a female general manager. I have heard that. Yes. And so I did some homework and I mean, the first thing I heard of that, I was like, come on, here we go again. I thought we just got rid of that whole woke stuff with the election. Wasn't that the point of it? No, apparently not. So I, I go ahead and I started looking at, I went, okay, all right, well, I could see that. I could see her. She seems like she knows what she's doing. She's got a good background. She, you know, she looks the part. Now, general manager, I still don't know, but president, somebody to run your organization, I can see that. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if it was with the Jets because she worked with the Jets. And Mike Tannenbaum has a, I don't know if you heard about it, but Tannenbaum, and I forget who else, another NFL guy that you know, they have this agency basically that uh, you pay them and they, they, they do all the work by letting you know who you should be going after and hiring. 
to run your organization, which is the smart way to do it. If you're if you're somebody like Woody Johnson, you shouldn't be doing all this yourself. You, like you've said many times, if you're not if you don't know how to run an NFL team or you don't know how to how to how to be a GM, well, don't try to be one. Hire someone or hire people that know what you're doing to do it. Uh, Woody Johnson's perfect example. Uh, you know the Jerry Jerry Jones in Dallas, the same thing. I mean, yep. these teams haven't been. It's been over two decades that they've accomplished anything, and. They're obviously have the money. They got the ability to make the raise that kind of money, buy a team. I mean, I don't know what Jerry's Jones's motivation to improve is. He makes he has the richest franchise in the world. He makes a lot of money. He has a lot of money. I mean, other than pride, what's what's the reason to make him? It's the team's a mess. But you know, okay, they're on a two win. Two game winning streak. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did that interview with RJ Joa of uh, bloggingtheboys.com and asked him about that. And he basically kind of talked about how, you know, as far as Jerry's concerned, hey, the Cowboys franchise is still the franchise. Look at where they are business wise. So, as far as he's concerned, He's doing great. He's doing a great job because that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about the value of your business. It it depends on what your motivation is. I mean, if you have enough money, like Elon Musk, if he's worth four hundred billion, if if you give him twenty million or twenty billion, who cares? I mean, does it really matter when I you know. have that much? I don't know. I it mean, should be about winning football games, not the value of your team. It, well, it's in, in it, it, it's what it, it's two things. You're a football fan. You're a football junkie. You want to win. You want your you want the pride of it being the champion, or you just want to keep making a lot of money, or you want to do both. Well, Cowboys, like you said, now are going to try and uh, make everybody uh, think in Dallas that they still have a shot. As we take a look at the uh, playoff uh, picture here, so there's the Bucks. We don't anticipate they're going to be there long at eight. Uh, the Cardinals with an excruciating loss to Minnesota. They had the lead the entire game, and then they blew it late, uh, and uh, and they lose that one. Um, meanwhile, the Rams they were they uh, held on to beat the Saints, so they're now at five. The Niners are done, so they're done. Yeah, Niners are done. Put a fork in them. And they're the Cowboys. Forget them. They're not for real. So really, you've got the Rams, the Cardinals, and the Bucks. They're all at six and six. And they're all uh, a, a game and a half behind the commanders. And that's the only team. It really is. It's the only team that they can beat because nobody's catching the Packers now. It's not going to happen. And the commanders still have to play Philly in a couple of weeks. Who does, who's Washington? Washington's got a bye this week, right? So there, there are six teams on buys this week, yes. Yeah. So, um, matter of fact, I'm going to hope to hook up with. Um, my Washington insider in the next week or two to find out what's going on there. Uh, and I, matter of fact, I wanted to do that for the Philly week. So, uh, but next after the bye, they're at new Orleans. So that's good. Matter of fact, Washington's schedule is pretty good. They're at the saints. They got Atlanta at home, which is a great matchup. That's a playoff matchup right there. And then the last game's at Dallas. So they have one really tough game and that's at home against Philly. Uh, but Atlanta at home is also not going to be that easy unless Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, finds the fountain of youth, um, which is unlikely. Anyway, well, you're, coming, you're coming down. These guys have played 12 games, have had practice, they had preseason, whatever they do there, and and uh, the, these older guys are starting to wear and tear. It's it's catching up to them. Who do you like as the if you had to choose between the, uh, Arizona and the Rams? Who do you like uh, to catch? Uh, I, no, actually. The loser of uh, Tampa Bay, Atlanta. Let's say it's Atlanta. Let's say Tampa does catch them, because I know your answer would be Tampa if I, if, we, if I give you Tampa. So let's say it's Atlanta, Arizona, and the Rams. Who do you think has the best chance to catch uh, Washington? Oh, uh, not putting schedules into play. Well, I don't have their schedule in front of me, so I don't. Atlanta, Arizona, and who? Uh, uh, Rams. Yeah, their schedules, uh, again, Atlanta's schedule is pretty good. After Minnesota, they got Vegas, Giants, and Carolina. 
as easy games. Well, they should be three wins right there. And then they've got Washington on the road and Minnesota on the road. So those could be two losses but, right there. So that would put him at three and two, meaning Tampa Arizona would need Seattle to go four and one. Arizona has Seattle this week. That's yeah, hard Arizona's got Seattle this week, but their schedule opens up. They've got the Patriots, the Panthers, the Rams. There's a big one on the road. And then San Francisco to end the season. It's good that some of these teams are playing each other. So, well, that's that's one of the things the NFL did. They built in a lot of these uh, division games and rivalry games at the end of the season to keep the interest up. It's it's actually pretty good stuff. I'm, I'm, Who do you I'm, like? If you had a bet, Cardinals, Rams, Falcons. Who's, who, who who would you who would you feel comfortable wagering on to to to, to catch the Commanders? Who do the Rams play this week? Uh, Rams, uh, let's see. Rams are playing. They're not playing Buffalo this week. They're playing they Buffalo this week. They yeah. Are. Playing Buffalo this week. Uh, well, but then after that, they, do, they, they, get, they get two road games. They're at San Francisco on Thursday. And then the Jets, so that's a win. But their last two games are against Arizona and Seattle. And they're both at home. I think I'd probably, you know, the Rams have the pedigree because of the coach. The, you got the young coach with the Cardinals. I don't know what he'll do down the stretch, but the Rams seem to have a tougher schedule. I'd probably have to take Cardinals. All right, so you 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 feel good about the Cardinals? Uh, I don't feel I don't feel good about against them. those teams. Yeah, with those I teams. feel a little bit better than what what I'm hearing about the Rams. And see, so so you're telling me you prefer the Rams. No, I prefer I, – I think because the Cardinals have an easier schedule, I prefer the Cardinals. All right. Again, they're playing each other, though. Yeah, well, that's okay. That's that's only one of the five games that remain. Okay. You know. And um, and Seattle now, they've got a one-game lead. So they basically can almost wrap up the division with a win. So if they beat the Cardinals, the division's theirs because they'll yeah. be up basically yeah. three games. Yes, that yeah, Seattle comes to play. They 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 can take it. They can take the whole thing. I'm going to say and again, I haven't walked, looked at any of the lines yet again. So I'm going to say that line I I got to just imagine it's just going to be 3. Well, I can tell you in a minute. I just have to sign in here. You you've already looked at the lines? Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've already bet half the games. <laughs> um let me see. Your Seattle is at Arizona. Arizona's two and a half, 45. Okay. The old two and a half instead of three uh, nonsense. Okay. Uh, if so you like you Arizona, go. you play the money line. If you like the dog, you buy it up to three and take the three. And then the other, uh, uh, let's see. So that's, uh, the, that's it's two of them, the big rematches. The other one's in the AFC. And you've got the Chargers and the Chiefs. And this one's in Kansas City this time. But you know what? It, it, the way the Chiefs not only have been playing this year, but I, I, I've kind of, in this series, the Chargers seem to always play the Chiefs better in Kansas City. That's when they always have close games. That's when they seem to, but at home, they can't beat the Chiefs. Well, you know, the, Chargers have, out. the Chargers have no home field advantage. The people don't come out and you know, support them in L.A. That They're just like the, you know, the, the stepchild that nobody cares about in LA. So I got to think this line should be, let's see. I'm going to guess if they had, I mean, it's a chief. So they're going to, they're going to, you know, probably inflate their number anyway. I can't imagine though. I mean, they're getting screwed every time by the chiefs. So I got to imagine it's going to be a little lower. So I'll say the chiefs are fair. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say it's relatively low. I'll say the chiefs. I'm going to say three and a half. Well, there's there's more fours, but there are three and a halfs as well. Okay, and that makes sense because you can't get you can't make the Chiefs a six or seven point favorite over a good team anymore. You just can't. Well, they, well, they don't they don't cover any spreads. No, you don't cover. But but they generally will get a big lead, and then coast. But the problem is if they don't get some protection on their left side, Mahomes is getting killed. Yeah, well, I don't hey. know what they're going to do about that. Welcome to the real world. It's it, it, <laughs> left, gonna, tack, left tackles matter. 
Yeah, they're not going to fix it. So, well, yeah, I'm st- I'm I'm already thinking. I, I got to imagine you are too. That that Chargers is probably going to beat them. You know, the Chargers aren't the healthiest team right now. That's another issue. They're but not. The thing is, a lot of teams. Not healthy. Who's healthy? You know. Well, some some are healthier than others. Well, like, who's 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 who's? Uh, I mean, besides the running back, who else is out for the Chargers? They got some. They got some defensive people out. Um, they, you know, and they came into the year, even though they added Harbaugh, which was a huge addition, they weren't as strong across the board this year, resume wise, you know, the roster wise, as they were a year ago. Yeah. At receiver, but, especially. Yeah, they, they had lost enough quality to make you wonder. But because, because I mean, they're eight and four, because it was Staley, they'd be four and eight. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, you're, I don't know where the hell they come up with these hires with these co- coaches, but, but there's, it's a big difference. And now you're, I mean, Andy Reid against Jim Harbaugh, I mean, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough gig. Kansas City's winning ugly, and you but know, this I'd is probably, exactly I'd, what you. Just, this is I'd, exactly I'd, what I'd you asked. Just, I'd, I'd probably take the four points just for for the hell of it, but I, it, I wouldn't feel very comfortable about it because they're not really that healthy. Well, the fact is, is you pose this question on your video that is up in the library regarding can the Chiefs, you know, beat these types of teams? You know, can they turn it on against the good teams? Well, I guess we'll find out. We'll find well, out. The, this Char- the Chargers are not the upper echelon. No, but they're a heck of a team. They're a good team. Yeah. Are they, can they play Buffalo? Can they play Philadelphia? Can they play the uh, Lions? Sure. Can, you know, this is this this is this is not quite that high up the up the totem pole. This is still a good is a good team, but they're yeah. not a great team. No, they need another off season. They need an offseason of uh, some more personnel, especially oh, Jim, at Jim, wide receiver. Jim Harbaugh was gonna, will make this a championship team. Absolutely, will. we will. And this is a this is a very good draft class for tight ends, and guaranteed he's going to find one. He loves the tight end position. He made his his his. He didn't spend a lot of money. The Chargers this offseason at all. I mean, they didn't spend anything. But the one, uh, the, their most expensive free agent was their tight end. And it's not, and and Will Disley ain't no receiving tight end. He was just a very good blocker who could add a little bit of receiving to his game. And that's what Jim Harbaugh wants. He wants his, and then his first draft pick was the offensive lineman. He wants, he knows the game is won at the line of scrimmage. Oh, it is. It is. And these people that think, that think you you pay all the money to the quarterbacks and he's going to do it by himself. That's that bull. You need an offensive line. You need a defensive line. You need some edge, edge rushers. You need to get after the quarterback. You know, you, and you need to be able to run the ball. It's still the formula for winning football games is the same as it was 60 years ago. Yeah. It, you know, it block, tackle, protect the quarterback. I mean, if, if, uh, if Harbaugh can't find wide receivers, he'll go for two tight ends. Sure. Well, yeah, that's he will. Exactly. He will. He yeah. will. He'll do that. And that's the thing that I, I think, and we've talked about it recently as well, is that everybody can see that the running game is slowly coming back. Oh, And there are some really good running backs coming out of the draft next year. We had some good running young backs in the league now. And this is what's going to be great, is we're going to start to see the running game return to the NFL. And that's Bark- awesome. Barkley and Henry, man, there's some good ones. And there's other good ones in the league. And, I mean, Detroit has... You know, they, they, there's some. They have two of them. There's some, yes. There's some talent out there. This, and the kid that's coming be, out from Boise is going to be like, you know, everybody's going to be after him. Matter of fact, in the mock draft that came out, I was looking at a couple of mock drafts, and they both had the kid uh, going to the Cowboys. And of course, the Cowboys need a running back. Like, I mean, they got nobody. Um, but Cowboys need a, Cowboys need a general manager and an owner. Yeah, well, <laughs> that ain't changing. Where do you where do you draft them? What's that? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he ain't gonna be he ain't gonna be hiring no firm. I'll tell Mike you what Pentagon. though, if That's for it, sure. I'll tell you what, now we're gonna get Chicago 
with a new leader, court, coach is gone. They're playing well. Now the kid, I don't. The kid upstairs. There was a question yeah. about his maturity, even in college, and you're right about that. They're going to San Francisco this week. If San Francisco is really dead, and I really think they are, because you remember the offseason stuff with the contract issues and sure. the players wanted to be traded, and you know this, and then CMC didn't play any, and he what he played part of three games, and he's out now for the year. Yeah, and, and Ayuk out for the year. Look, look out for the Bears this week. Wow, and I know that's not a on the surface you're thinking oh Super Bowl team. San Francisco, the Niners are not a Super Bowl team. They're not What's that the same. line. Is that like San Francisco? What, like around four and a half or something? Four. Four. Okay. Four. Yeah. I mean, what does that mean? The Bears are getting like 170 on the money line? Something like that? I don't have that in front of me. That's not but bad. I mean, if you like the Bears, you might as well just well, go with the money no, line. Here. No, oh, no, I take the four. <laughs> I, lay <laughs> money, I lay money lines on small favorites, but on the, on the point spreads, I take the points. Dolphins are unfortunate. Look, the deal with the Dolphins is we look at the final AFC picture before we wrap things up. This was the game that we all expected the Dolphins would lose. That you looked at the schedule, like 90% of the games were winnable, but one game wasn't, and that's the game they lost. That's why it was like if they if they beat the Packers, forget it. They're gonna they, they, watch out. But they didn't beat the Packers. But the schedule is very easy now the rest of the way. But they need some help tonight. They need, they, they need they didn't play, to upset the Broncos tonight. They didn't They didn't play that badly at Green Bay. The weather did affect them. But Tua was not outrageously terrible there. A lot of people expected him to be really bad. He wasn't that bad. He did – he did accomplish some things. I was actually surprised he played as well as he did. They were outclassed at home. You don't win that many games at Green Bay anyway. And when you add the weather into it, but they should actually, I mean, they're still in the mix. They got, but they should annihilate the Jets. Well, they get them twice. Well, they should win both of them. And if they don't, they don't deserve to go anywhere. Oh, that's true. So, but the problem is, is uh, right now they are sitting at two games behind Denver, and it'll either be a game and a half or two and a half after tonight's game. So they really need they, they have to have Denver's to lose at least one game they're not supposed to win. This this is a terrible game for Cleveland. When two weeks ago they played at the Saints and everybody thought Cleveland was going to do good, they were coming off the bye and they got smoked. Then they got home against Pittsburgh, and they cut. That was their Super Bowl, yep. and they beat them. And that was a that was a tough game, but they beat them. And now this one, they're going out to Denver to play Denver, who's been really good. And guess what? What they have to do next week? You know, where do they, where does Cleveland play next week? Oh, Pittsburgh again. So you got to smoke. You got you got an up down up down up down. It, this I don't see Cleveland showing up that well tonight. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, I think I you're right. It. Big number, though, it. but I don't see it. I Denver, see after the bye, will be taking on the Colts. Actually, they have a pretty tough schedule, Denver. So they're catching well, The Colts are not a good team. But they but are not a big game, good though. football team. Look at that. You got Denver at seven and the Colts at eight. And they'll be playing after the bye in Denver. So the Colts... If, if they want to have something to say, they, there you go. But then after <laughs> that, Denver's got to go to the Chargers, the Bengals, and then host the Chiefs, which is probably a good game because the Chiefs probably rest everybody. So there you go. And then Miami, of course, has the easy schedule. And the Colts, uh, big win, last few seconds. Richardson, fourth down, runs it in. He's a horse. He can, two -pointer. He can he, if he could ever learn to control his short passing game, he could be he could be trouble. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's the look at the playoffs right there. Uh, but by by the way, the Bengals they had the the, the oh. off week, and we talked about if they can beat the Steelers, they can yeah. get into this thing with their schedule. And you could just tell right off the bat 
as soon as the Bengals scored that t- touchdown and Pittsburgh went right down the field to score another touchdown, you were like, yeah, it, it's over. The, the Bengals have a high school defense. They can't I don't, stop I don't, I don't know what the hell's wrong with them, but they got a high school defense. That team, that's hard. That defense is horrible. They got to fire and, the defensive coordinator, and unfortunately, they and, didn't and he do was it actually, by. He wasn't bad in previous years. I, no, I he wasn't. Know, he was not bad. I don't know what the hell yeah. happened. Well, again, I think that's really the fault of the front office. The front office did not provide the proper personnel. Well, the front office in Cincinnati has never been real loose with the dollars. No. They, they've they been, you know, they don't provide great practice facilities. I mean, it's, they're, they're lucky they have Joe Burrow and Higgins and Chase and because their offense is incredible. But – yeah, at some shame. point, at some point in time, they're going to start. They're going to give up too because they're out of it now. And that's what's the motivation for these teams going forward? Yeah, the Bengals. Uh, I mean, the only motivation they have is is that again their schedule is uh, pretty easy. So, you know, but uh, even if they run the table, it's it's not looking good because they don't have Denver. I don't think so. No, they don't have Denver. It's too bad. If they had Denver, then they have something. But. They don't even right. have Denver. So, oh, wait, they do have Denver. Oh, okay. So here's Cincinnati's schedule. So in the next three weeks before they host Denver, Cincinnati w- would be going to Dallas on Monday night this week, Tennessee on the road, and Cleveland on Thursday night at home. So righteous, they, righteously, they should win all those games. They should, but, even but with their bad with that, defense. Not with that defense, they're not going to do it. No, but they're I not mean, do it with that defense. Yeah, but I mean, they've won four games. So they can't beat the good teams with their defense. Their, their playoff probability right now is four percent. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> analytics. So, uh, so let's say they win those three. Now they're seven and eight, and they play Denver, and Denver. Again, we they're seven and five. So we agree they're probably gonna win tonight. So they go to eight and five. So they would have to get a game. They, Bengals gotta be a game back when they play Denver. So that means Denver would have to lose three of the next four. That means they actually, excuse me, after because they got the bye. They'd have to lose two straight, which is possible because they play the Colts at home, as I mentioned. And the Colts need the game bad, and the Chargers on the road. So if Denver loses those two games and the Bengals win their next three, then uh, they got a shot. As sick as that sounds, but then again, you got to worry about these teams winning too. So, but it's over. I don't know what I'm talking. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's over. If the defense would have shown some sort of light, but no. All right. Uh, that's going to wrap it up, as you can see, because Jim's already called it a – oh, wait, what am I doing here? No, stay. Wrong wrong button. Uh, that is going to wrap things up here uh, as we are going to be back again on Friday. Now, just uh, check out the schedule here on ProLine, so uh, ProLine TV. So we're going to have uh, – the Playbook ATS podcast on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be doing some videos, uh, college football videos, uh, just to kind of talk about uh, the brackets and the playoffs and the rankings. And you can also check out the videos over at the RLADS football YouTube channel. We always provide links in the description for that. And then uh, Wednesday, we'll have the big show with Mark, and Jim, uh, and all of our big handicappers will be with us. So that's Wednesday. And then Jim and I will return on Friday to preview the weekend. So we're going to talk a lot, of course, about the NFL. Are you, are you, are you, with with conference college football uh, action this week, are you ready to talk college football yet, Jim? I I will be ready, but I I will be ready by Friday. I don't know what happened. I disappeared again. Uh, I don't know. You're back. So (laughs) uh, anyway, so yeah. So uh, Jim and I will be back on Friday to preview the weekend in the NFL. We'll talk college football. We'll have uh, all those really cool conference uh, championship games to talk about. It's a lot of fun. Matter of fact, when we talk on Friday that night, 
some of those games uh, are going to take place. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, and it's, wow. I mean, we're right here. We're, we're Jim, as far as college football is concerned, waited uh, my whole life. And we're only a few weeks away from the college football playoff format. I'm, I'm so excited about the fact that we have 12 teams. You get all, so many more fan bases involved. And so it's, it's so much better now than it used to be. I'm really excited for it. Yeah. And, and the transfer portal, as crazy and as sick as it is sometimes, it is and it's wild. out of control. The it's fact cold. is it's, it's good for the sport and it makes all these teams relevant. And it makes these, these, you know, like Georgia looking like they're two plays away from losing four games this year. And Alabama, three losses needing to somehow backdoor themselves into the playoffs. And Ohio State losing to Michigan, and yet they're in the playoffs. So uh, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun, not just this year, but from years to come. It's a great time to follow college football. And we're going to talk more about it on Friday. We'll talk more about it on Wednesday again with Mark Lawrence. Of course, he had the week off last week. So we all handicappers back and Andy and Victor and Tony and such. So look out. And then you've got the restaurant show on Thursday. And I do. Do you guys mostly talk NFL or do you talk both NFL college? We, we've been doing only NFL, but we're, we're going to uh, put basketball and the uh, college football in there eventually. I don't know what week they'll – <laughs> the guys that are we got we actually Andy's going to be on there this week. Oh, all yeah. right. He's we got three guests. I mean, me and three others, and then of course the host. But it's going to be a little bit crowded on the stage, but we'll have some good stuff. All right, looking forward to it, and of course all the other videos, the shorts. Uh, we're just piling them up here on the channel. Uh, check it out. Uh, we'll have also a horse racing show. Matter of fact, I picked I picked one of the winners last week on the horse right. racing show, eleven to one shot. Oh, so uh, got that one, and one, we we do two every week. Uh, we have two races we pick, and then we also do a bonus pick that John Hardoon, the handicapper, will give a bonus pick, like one of his favorite races. He, he just wants to choose because I always have to make sure that we're doing like the best races, and sometimes they're not great wagering races to make money off of, but they're the most they're the biggest races. That's why we do them. But John, I always say, all right, John, you can pick whatever race you want. Your free pick, go ahead and give it. So we're always going to have uh, at least three picks. So you can check that out. Uh, hockey and F1 and so forth. So uh, thanks for tuning in here to our show here on ProLine TV. And uh, we'll see everybody again on Friday.